Well, good morning. Can you all hear me at the back? Right, great. Uh, well, 9.30, I was told it's showtime. So, well, welcome to this uh, first Basset seminar. Okay. Uh, and it's great to see many of you here. Of course, I know it's Monday morning. You know, when the organizers kept telling me 5th of January, I looked at the, the calendar and said, Monday morning. I said, you should push it to Tuesday. But it's great to see many of you here. We have a very good mix of uh, topics lined up for you, right? Uh, you can, as you can see from the uh, see from the schedules we've arranged for you, from Web 2.0 tools, online learning, mind maps, Second Life in NUS. So it's a very good mix, and we hope it'll hope uh, to keep you engaged in many of the topics here. All right. Uh, by the way, my name is uh, Ravi Chandran. I'm from the Center for Instructional Technology, and uh, I want to first take this opportunity to thank uh, the speakers for agreeing to support us for this Basset Seminar. Uh, thank you for coming forward, and of course, all of you here for attending this seminar. My presentation today will focus more on the technologies that CIT supports, Center for Instructional Technology, and uh, to give you an overview of what we have at NUS. Now, uh, Center for Instructional Technology, or CIT, we were formed in 1998. We have a mandate uh, to support teaching and learning at NUS to the use of IT and uh, audiovisual technologies. We are we are three locations on campus. If you take a look, we, our main office is on the third floor of Computer Center, where most of the staff sit. We take up one quarter of the Computer Center, not the whole third floor. Uh, about 100 meters away from the Computer Center is our recording studio, video recording studio where all our video equipment sits in, our audio recording booth is there. We have blue screen facilities for video recording, right? So it's a, it's a fairly uh, big studio. This is the uh, CDTL building also, Library Annex or CDTL building. And about 500 meters away at house 11, uh, it's a bungalow, our video crew or multimedia crew sits, resides there, all of the crew resides there. And it's a house on a hill, beautiful views, but and very secluded. And our post-production facilities are there, video post-production, non-linear editing, uh, documentation facilities, our archival systems are on this, at this house level. So we have three locations that we manage. So the video crew, the video facilities are the library annex and house level. So this is uh, CIT, okay? Our e-learning strategy is fairly straightforward and simple. We value the importance of face-to-face -face teaching. Okay, we value the importance of face-to-face -face teaching, and we view technology more as a facilitator to support the face-to-face -face teaching, not to replace the face-to-face -face teaching. So we look at technologies that supplement face-to-face -face teaching. We also look at technologies that help staff and students to be more productive in what they are already doing. So things like. Uh, Faster and easier communication between the lecturer and students. We will look for technologies like that. Technologies that can allow the students to download the notes easier. Technologies that allow the staff to send a mass email to all the students in the class. You know, technologies that allow the, the lecturer to see all the students in the class immediately. So we look at technologies that make the staff and students more productive. So it's quite uh, basic. And of course, we focus on technologies that enhance students' learning. So this is our... Uh, e-learning strategy that we have uh, been employing all the time. Uh, CIT's main system, of course, is our NUS course management system, right? IVLE, Integrated Virtual Learning Environment. I think it's, uh, some of you might be using it or most of you are using it. Now, many of you don't, uh, did, don't know that this was actually created, written in 1998. 1998. Written in-house by NUS. Okay, it's not purchased. It's written in-house by NUS. And uh, every semester, every year, we do constant revision, constant changes to the software based on staff and students' feedback. So it has been going on to many, many iterations. It's on, um, I think it's on version 9 now. It's changed a lot. And uh, it's, it's been kept relevant to the staff and students' feedback. And you can see we have a fair amount of tools huh, from assessments right up to uh, surveys and polls. So it's, uh, it's on par with many of the commercial systems you see uh, in the world now. Another key service that we provide is, of course, our webcast lectures at the bottom of the screen. 
right? Webcast lectures. About 10% of NUS lectures are recorded and broadcast live over the intranet. Uh, this is a very, very popular service with students. Very popular service students. Students um, want webcast lectures for revision. Okay, for revision, reinforcement of learning. And they keep asking the same question. Why isn't all the modules webcast? <laughs> okay. so that's what they want. But we keep telling them it's very much uh, lecturer-driven. Lecturers must make a request to have it webcast. And they must be comfortable. Students also want a video of the lecture in a lecture. In a, in a webcast lecture. So they like to see the lecturer's video here, a small window of the lecture. They want to have context to the webcast lecture. They do not want to just see a audio recording. Okay? They want to see the lecturer moving about. They want to see the lecturer bending down, picking up his pen, turning his back, those kind of things. Okay? They also want to see a, the desktop, the full desktop of the lecturer. Not just PowerPoint, but what the lecturer is moving, whether he's moving the mouse, He's clicking on the software. They want to see it so they know what's happening. They're not losing out. And they want an index. They want an index down here to the webcast lecture. They want to pick and choose what they want to study. You'll be surprised. You think a, a student going into a webcast lecture will wait for 45 minutes to watch the lecture and come out? No. They just want to go to the points that they might have missed or to reinforce their certain topics. Okay, so the index is very, very crucial. We make sure that all our webcast lectures have an index into the various uh, videos of the webcast lecture. So this is what students want to do. They don't, they don't want to waste their time watching 45 minutes, 50 minutes of a lecture. Pick and choose. Now, uh, as I mentioned, 10% are being webcast. Outside on the foyer, we have the technology that we will show you how we are recording the lectures remotely from... From CIT, we can record the lectures in the various lecture theatres without going there to the lecture theatre. So uh, please take some time, go to, the, uh, go to our booths outside, take a look at how we are recording the uh, lectures. Our system, this IVLA system, is also integrated to many of the NUS back-end systems. Okay? Uh, as I mentioned, we have the source code. So we are integrated to the NUS library systems, the NUS administrative systems, the NUS academic systems. Uh, we can do it. So we, we more or less try to integrate it to many of the relevant systems which students and staff want, not all the systems. Certain systems we, tr we, we try not to integrate. So as you can see here, uh, it's fairly integrated. That's one significant advantage uh, NUS has over other um, cost management or learning management systems you see in other universities, there's no integration. The library is separate. You need to log into the library. Uh, the classroom rosters, the photographs of students are on a separate system. You need to log in. Whereas in, in, this, in IVLE and in NUS, it's very, very tightly integrated, and that's our strength. Okay, that's our strength. So it's very much uh, web-based. We try not to put in a lot of third-party components, Java components, web-based single sign-on with one ID and password you can go to the other systems, not just IBLE. In terms of uh, usage, IBLE usage, as I mentioned, we started, we started collecting the fig, uh, statistics in 2001. We had about 700, 800, correct? 800, 800 modules online. At that time, it was fairly uh, soft launch. We just launched the system let it pick up from itself, and we began to do roadshows promotion. And now we are about 80% of the NUS modules are on our system, 80%. Uh, slight dip from uh, 2006, 2007 to 2007, 2008. Slight dip. Uh, I think that's because we launched a new interface, <laughs> which, which lecturers didn't seem to like. So uh, we have uh, taken much of the advice given us by the lecturers, and I think uh, in this subsequent revisions, uh, the coming semester, you'll see a significant difference in terms of performance, speed, consistency. We have cleaned it up a lot. Uh, but we had to go to this uh, new interface due to some technology changes that is taking place. Also, we'll be way behind, backward. So, uh, the slight dip in terms of modules, but uh, I think, I think it's, it's, uh, we will start looking at it uh, and start doing more roadshows, more promotion to get it back to uh, speed. So we are more or less on steady state. Uh, we just need to have targeted outreach activities now to pick those lecturers who are not using the system aggressively. 
In uh, September, November last year, we did a survey, student survey and a staff survey on IVLE. Uh, for students, we had about 6,000 respondents. And these are some of the questions we uh, posed to students. And um, most of them access IVLE every day, more than three times a week or every day. So that's the first question that you see here. And um, where do they access it? Most often they access it from home, most often. Not from campus, from home. Okay. So they prepare before they come for the uh, lessons. Then um, has, it has it helped in your communication and collaboration between the lecturers and the students? Yes. Do they find it difficult to use? Uh, yes, only 3%. <laughs> but the staff is opposite. <laughs> but staff is opposite. So we have to identify those staff that is uh, finding it difficult to use. But, but staff got more things to do, right, on IBL. You've got, you got to create the tools. You've got to set the access right. You've got to identify when is the opening date of the tool, when is the closing. So more things to do. Students just come in and use the system. And uh, for students, where do they turn for help? They turn to their friends. They don't even look at our guide. They don't, online guide, they don't look at it. They don't look at a book. They turn to their friends for help, which is quite true, the informal way of uh, learning. Uh, user experience, uh, positive, and uh, most of them like the fact that they can download their course notes in one location. Or they can go to one place and access everything related to the course. So that is the uh, feedback. Again, like I mentioned earlier in, in my uh, slide, productivity, we focus on productivity. You know, technologies that can make them uh, be more productive in what they are already doing. So they want to download their notes faster. They don't want to waste their time. They want to uh, access all the information in one location. They want to receive announcements quickly related to the course. So it's a fa fairly um, administrative way of, uh, you know, this more or less, it's a cost management system. So it's uh, more on the admin side of things they're focusing on. Uh, in October, we launched NUS YouTube. We have a special channel with uh, uh, Google YouTube. So we have a, uh, we mainly launched it for outreach activities. Okay, like as I mentioned, go where the potential students are going to showcase some of the public seminars that are being held at NUS. So uh, the, the biggest department using this is uh, Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy. Very aggressive. They have put in a lot of uh, of their public uh, seminars online on YouTube, and the reviews from the YouTube users are very positive. They're very happy with the content, with the quality of the content. And uh, I must say that statistics is very good from uh, YouTube. You can see wh which countries are coming in from, dates and times, number of users. You know, the statistics is very, very comprehensive and extensive, which is very good for the uh, NUS users who are using uh, this, this service. So the URL is given down there. You can go to the URL and access uh, NUS YouTube. Five departments are now using this service. Okay, they have to come to CIT to upload the videos. Uh, ju just, just to for quality content, quality assurance, those kind of things. But once they are familiar, we let them go on their own. And in fact, uh, the Office of Corporate uh, Relations also knows about the service, and they are going to make a link from the NUS website to this NUS YouTube. Another key service that uh, CIT provides, is of course, video video production. Okay, as I mentioned, we have a, a CIT studio. So we do uh, corporate videos, informational videos, instructional videos, uh, digital photography. We, con we do consultation and we do courses on video. Now outside the foyer we have, uh, we showcase all the videos that we have done and uh, we have uh, some information on how you can apply for this service. So please take some time to take a look at the videos. It's a very comprehensive list of videos from corporate right up to instructional videos. We are trying to focus more on the instructional videos, informational videos to help you in courseware development. This is a quick a snapshot of some of the other CIT services that we provide. Most of this is given on our website. I uh, just want to pick a few, like blogs and wikis. Again, in the foyer, we have a booth set up on blogs and wikis, so you can get more information on what is a blog, how to use the blog, and how to use a wiki service at NUS. Uh, besides NUS YouTube, NUS is, has its own uh, media repository called NUS Galleria. This is a joint project with Computer Center. This is to house all the NUS corporate assets, digital assets, videos, 
photographs permanently, permanently. Okay, so we have um, videos from 1960s, 1970s on this site. And uh, whereas NUS YouTube is a public, right, public service, whereas NUS Gallery, you can, you can close it only for NUS staff or you can make it open for the public. So it works both ways. And we encourage you to use this service so that it's a permanent repository. Okay, it's kept permanently. So this is an internal uh, media repository. And of course, we do a lot of uh, video conferencing. All right? We use conferencing for... CIT is responsible for a lot of the video conferencing on, on uh, campus. Conferencing is used for distance learning, online meetings, seminars, guest lectures, and also for telemedicine. And uh, again, in the booth, we have these portable video conferencing devices that you can borrow and do video conferencing through our systems. So, so please do take a look. And a list of other services that I mentioned is supported by CIT. By the way, there is a mobile IBLE down uh, at a, as you see down here. Uh, we have our cost management system on a mobile platform. Very few users still picking up, but uh, I would say maybe in the next two, uh, one year or so, it might get steady stream. We do get requests for, from students uh, how to access this, this service on a mobile platform. So, uh, as I mentioned, many of this is available on our website. So, do come and uh, visit the website. Uh, now, before I round up my presentation, I just want to talk about uh, this thing called student uh, lifestyle trends. Um, one of the one of the um, aims of CIT is, of course, to look at trends, what's happening in the internet space and to advise the university, you know, in, in terms of education technology, what sort of technologies should the university focus on, uh, how should it uh, use some of the education technologies that are in place, should we invest in a few things. So we also actively look at the student uh, lifestyle trends of students, those potential students that are coming to the university. What are their expectations in terms of technology use? How are they using the technologies? So we do uh, a bit of investigation. So um, these are some of my own thoughts, okay? It's not an official paper or something. These are some of the things that I've more or less uh, gleamed from the newspapers and uh, talking to students coming to NUS. The first thing is, is this connected culture. Uh, extensive broadband, extensive wireless coverage in Singapore, okay? Cost of broadband going down you're going to get this connected culture happening. Students will always be on and connected on the internet. Always be on, connected. Um, students will be accessing the internet 3, 4 in the morning. Okay. Being on and connected means they want the service running 24 by 7. Right? You're on and connected, you want the service running 24 by 7. 10 years ago, I remember our mainframe systems, we were saying from 2 in the morning to 6 in the morning, do not access the system because we're doing backups. But guess what? On IVLE, the highest usage is from 10 in the night to 4 in the morning. <laughs> the highest peak usage of students is from 10 in to 4 in the morning. So many of our services, if our staff needs to do uh, certain patches, they do it at 6 in the morning. They run, they quickly rush in, bring it down and quickly bring it up. Because <laughs> students do complain. Once the service down, the students are complaining that they can't download the notes. So students expect the services running 24 by 7 now. Okay, so you need, uh, the planning needs to be done that way. They also want instant results, fast results. Okay, they want the results quickly and extremely fast. If they don't like the service, they move to another service. They just keep hopping. That's why you have uh, the same user on MySpace, the same user on Facebook, the same user on other communities all over the place. They're just going, picking and choosing what they want. What gives them the best options. So uh, if you don't respond, they move to another service. Uh, State Stamps article, 10th of uh, November, wireless is SG spawns and always on culture. This was, this came out even before, uh, before I done my slides in fact. So uh, more or less proven correct. Okay. So and you can see the internet usage here for IBLE is like I said 10 at night, right up to four in the morning. So this is one uh, lifestyle that we are seeing from students. The second one is they have more choices now to information. 
They're actively participating in online communities. Everybody knows Facebook. I think the reason everybody knows Facebook is because newspapers keep saying Facebook. <laughs> it's not that they're using, newspapers keep saying Facebook. I've seen uh, people coming in and telling me my six-year-old has a Facebook presence. Six years old. <laughs> and he's communicating with his friends in his class. The st and, the, and the classes are using it. So active participation in communities, Facebook, MySpace, uh, another thing called Ning. NUS also has its own online communities. NUS has its own on online communities. Uh, Computer Center has some, CIT has few. Like uh, in NUS, if some of you don't know, NUS, NUS online community is at this website called U. You know, the, the, char the character u.nus.edu.sg. There are about 22,000 communities created, hosted by Computer Center. u.nus.edu.sg. Just a letter U. Uh, and stands for you. So uh, get to the website, apply for a community, and you should be able to get one uh, immediately. 50 megabytes of this space is provided initially. <coughs> 22,000 communities created on NUS alone. And uh, I'm, I'm told of inter there are lots of NUS users on Facebook. So active participation. And what are they doing in these communities? They're sharing videos, sharing files, sharing uh, MP3 uh, audio files. Legal or le illegally, we don't know. But they're doing that. <laughs> and then they're comfortable multitasking. Right? Um, while they're studying, the computer is on, music is on, instant messaging is coming in. I've seen it happening. Right? I am thinking, how the hell can they study like that? But <laughs> I am comfortable they start uh, responding to I am. The music is still bla uh, blasting away in the, in the ears. And they're studying. But they're very comfortable doing this. Because they're getting, the, you know, they started to do it when they were young. So this, this is also uh, going to be prevalent. Multitasking and comfortable navigating in a multimedia environment. And they will be aggressive multimedia content creators and publishers. They'll be using it very inno innovatively. They'll be able to create their own videos. You can already see it in NUS YouTube. Right? When you go there, you'll see a lot of self-generated video content being created and shared. So... Um, so these are some of the things that are going to be happening, the lifestyles. And in this, in this diagram that I showed here, the network user, if you can see, NUS will be one of the many uh, services. NUS will be one of the many services that will be competing for the student's response. The third point, of course, is mobility and accessibility. They will want more, I feel more applications mobile enabled. They want more applications mobile enabled. They will decide when, where, how to receive information. It could be the handphone that can do everything or a handphone come a lightweight notebook. They might want both devices or one device. But they'll expect more of the applications uh, mobile enabled. And as you can see from the diagram, uh, this student, you want to see my, on the MRT station, you want to see my homework or you want to see my movies? on the handphone, okay? And this was uh, one year ago, this article in the newspaper, one year ago. On IVLE, from January to June 2008, 80,000 SMS were sent by lecturers to students in the class. And it's been consistent all the time. So uh, it, won't, it won't happen overnight. We're slowly picking up uh, the use of uh, mobile applications, mobile devices to get information. The last point I want to uh, mention is this thing called Future Schools at Singapore. The, the reason I brought this up is because these are the st students that are going to, potential students that are going to come to campus. Okay, MOE has set up this program. They've just launched the uh, third master plan, IT master plan for schools in uh, July last year. And one of the programs or projects is Future Schools at Singapore identified five schools, going up to 15 schools in 20 of 2015. And these, these schools will be taking the lead in the use of ICT in teaching and learning, whole transformation of, of uh, teaching and learning in the schools. They are, these five schools have been identified to make them go further. They've showed some innovations. So you can see if it's from primary schools, secondary schools, to junior colleges, where our potential students are and coming onto campus. So many of these students, and these are the uh, projects that 
that have been identified by MOE for the schools to focus on. It's fairly generic, but uh, we intend to go and take a look at it more and more uh, as, as we uh, study what are the schools doing. So you can see some are like Jurong Secondary School, you, it sees communities of learners, maybe it's the online communities. So um, the reason I brought this up is because many of these students coming to, will be coming to NUS and they will be expecting, right, some of the things that they have used in these primary schools, secondary schools, junior colleges to be made available, to be, to be available at NUS also. Now with that, thank you for your time. Okay, I've just made it. Uh, do, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to raise them. Thank you. Thank you, Ravi.